Hi, everybody, and welcome to the new set of point cap tutorials at Lifehack series. As most of you might already know, before you can start working with a point cloud, there is one important thing you have to do first. Registering your scans, of course. Therefore, we're going to start our today's series with the point cap registration. In this video, we will show you how to register a point cloud in point cap in four steps. For a better overview, you will find markers for all of the steps in the video description below. For all serving professionals and those of you who want to become one, you will find more life hacks and setting options in other videos. For now, I'll stick to the basics and show you how to get started. Let's dive right in and start with the first step, importing the data. First, we click new to create a new project. As you can see, we can either select open scan data here or start the advanced importer. Since our scans are not registered yet, we need to select the advanced importer. Then we name our new project and select a suitable storage folder. After saving the data, the advanced importer opens automatically. Via add, we select all the scans we want to register and drag and drop them into the importer. With a click on start right over here, PointCap starts and begins to import the scans. In our example here, our project consists of 20 scans, so the import takes around 20 to 30 minutes realistically. Uh, we'll just fast forward here and the import is finished. Now we can move on to the next step. The feature search. After the data import is finished, the registration editor opens automatically. Here we can take a closer look at the individual scans, but before we put the effort of searching spheres or targets ourselves, we'll just let PointCap do the job. This will save us a lot of time. In order to do that, we simply click on the process button in the job list right over here. Then the setting options appear in the job editor. Here we now choose whether PointCap should search for targets or spheres. In our case, we use spheres with a diameter of 145 millimeters and 200 millimeters while scanning. So we go ahead and check these two boxes. Now PointCap shows what to search for and we can start the job. When all jobs are completed, you can see how many features PointCap found in the importer in each scan. In order to conduct a proper registration, we need at least three features in each scan. Otherwise, we won't be able to merge our scans to a unified point cloud. So that's looking really good right here. In case point cap did not find three features in every scan, you can go ahead and check again manually. To do so, simply open the corresponding scan. In our case, we will take a look at scan number one right here to see if we can find an additional feature. And as a matter of fact, we can see an additional sphere when we zoom in. To add it, we select the sphere tool from the toolbar. Of course, should you be using targets, you would select the target tool here. Just click on the feature and bam, it's added. If enough features are found in every scan, we're good to go to the next step, which is gonna be the constellation search. Now it's time to merge the scans into one point cloud. This is what we're going for. We do this with the constellation search and simply start the job in the job list again. If the scans and the features are consistent, you can go to the next step. In this case, point cap tells us that it could not assign all scans to a group. Checking the importer reveals the source of the issue. Under group, we can see that all but two of the scans were assigned to group one. But in order to complete the constellation search, all scans must always be in one group, so in group one. The only exception are scans with geodetic points. If you're working with these, they're all supposed to be in group zero. That's important to note, as you can see, scans 18 and 19 are not in group one. If we open the scan 17 and 18, we see that the two features in the basement are named differently on both scans. Although these are indeed the same features, they weren't recognized as such. Therefore, we have to do this manually. Now to tell PointCab that the features are the same, we simply mark them with the select tool. We copy the name from scan 17 in the job editor and paste it back into scan 18 for the corresponding feature. We do the same for the second feature 
a recommendation for the professionals among you. To quickly select the select tool, you can simply click the right mouse button twice. That is a very nice shortcut. Once we start the job again on the bottom right, we can see that Scan18 has now also landed in Group 1. That's exactly the result we were looking for. So obviously, that's a good thing. If we open Scan19, we can see the very same features are responsible for the wrong placement. Therefore, we open up Scan18 again, copy the name from Scan18, repeating exactly what we did before, and we start the job again. We get the message that the scans are prepared for the final registration. The constellation search has now already finished, and we can quickly move to the next step, which is going to be the adjustment. Although the global adjustment, also called last square optimization per se, takes a good bit of mathematical understanding and skill, it's actually quite simple for the end user in PointCab. What exactly global adjustment is and what it's for is a topic for a totally different video. All you need to proceed are the numbers you find under residuals in the table. Uh, with a click on residuals, they'll be assorted. PointKit will try to balance those values automatically with the least square method. We simply start the job and let PointCab do the heavy lifting. If you now look at the residuals again, you can see that they have become less or smaller. If they are still red values at this point, you need to decide if your project's accuracy is going to be sufficient for you, or in worst case scenario, it might be that you will have to scan the whole project or at least an area of that project again. But in our example, most of the residual look pretty neat. Therefore, we can move forward and go to the last step, the final registration. So for the last time, we start the job in the job list again, and et voila, our scans are registered just what we wanted. Now you can start to create floor plans, measure areas, and much more in the automatically calculated standard views PointCap has for you. How to do this and what the numbers in the PDF mean, which I get by double clicking on the registration job, you might ask. Well, we'll gladly explain this to you in another video. Okay, and for now, we are looking forward to your feedback. Did your registration work for you? Was this video helpful? Share your experience in comments. Like this video if you found it helpful. And of course, don't forget to subscribe if you want more. See you next time. Thank you and goodbye.